It's time for the absolutely... I'm on my way! Completely! I'm almost there! Random! Why are there so many stairs? Podcast! Oh, jeez! With Andrew Rhodes. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast for Saturday, March 13th, 2021. Wow. It's already March 13th. You know, this time last year was a Friday. Yeah, I'm not even joking. I remember this. I got my Pikachu shirt. <clears throat> the last day I worked, oh, for a good two months. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, those were the times, huh? Hmm. Anyway, what topics do I got to talk about this week? Well, believe it or not, uh, if you remember correctly, last week I had made a comment about, oh, gee, you know, it'd be really nice if we could get, uh, you know, I could name another anime that could use a second season. No sooner do I finish recording the podcast, but it is announced. Bam, baby. The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2 is officially coming. We're getting Season 2. Season 2! I'm actually excited about this. Uh, Comic Kit 99 has been postponed once again uh, due to Tokyo's uh, emergency, state of emergency extension, which basically means you're not getting to go to Comet, to Comic Kit 99. Uh... I'll explain why. The Full Dive RPG anime is sharing its new visuals, the amazing official title, and a whole bunch of other shit. This actually sounds pretty cool. Shaman King anime, you know, the anime, the, the new Shaman King that's coming out, it's going to be streaming on Netflix. On Netflix. Press F for your respects. <laughs> that's, that's the bad part. <laughs> and a Japanese tavern is uh, basically sending you an RPG-like quest. And, oh, you're going to love this. this. This honestly is a good way to like really, really nail home the crowd of uh, gamers out there. <clears throat> but anyway, all this and more this week on the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. Before we go any further, folks, you know the song and dance. I'm sure you do by now. A-R-H-O-A-D-S hyphen 2012 on eBay. I have a wide variety of stuff for sale from useless junk to trading cards, DVDs, video games, you name it. One person's trash is another person's treasure. I mean, come on. I got some computer games. I got some, like, some yeah, action figure parts and transformer parts, Power Ranger parts, you name it. One person's trash is another person's treasure. You can always find something on eBay, the worldwide garage sale. Well, actually, it's more like a worldwide flea market if you think about it. It's a worldwide flea market. But oh, oh, yes. It's a wonderful day in the neighborhood, folks. That's right, because you can swing on by my eBay page. That's A R H O A D S hyphen 2012 on eBay. And hey, while you're surfing the World Wide Web, why not check out my Twitter page, at Otaku Roads. I'm usually there most of the time. And while you're at it, uh, go check out the official Web Designer 18 Facebook page. And while you're still here, you know, on YouTube, on this actual video, you know, provided you haven't clicked off because I'm boring as all hell, why don't you like, comment, and subscribe? And ring the notification bell to be notified when new videos drop right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. All right, so this is the part where I usually go about how my week went. Um, and honestly, it's not been a good week. It, it honest to God, has not been a good week. Um, so since last week, since we last spoke to one another, um, last Friday. I, I guess I should just regale you all with the tale of my epic battle with the phone company at this point. It, it, this is an epic battle here. This is something that's going to go down in Legends. I'm going to lose, but it's going to go down in Legends either way. So last Friday, I called the phone company. This would have been on the 5th. I called the phone company because we want to change the name on the account. It wasn't my grandfather's name. We're finally getting around to taking care of some of this stuff. And when I talked to the person, they're like, oh, yes, yeah, sir, not a problem, not a problem. I said, you know, I don't want to have, like, a service interruption or anything. Oh, no, no, sir, no service interruption whatsoever. You will not have your service interrupted, we promise. Fast forward to Wednesday. 
Now, when I left for work Wednesday morning, the internet was still there. because I quick checked my email, wanted to make sure something I'd shipped out made it to its destination, and it had, and I was happy. And I'm like, okay, cool. When I went to work, blissful ignorance of anything that was going to happen. So, I come home. Now, I already wasn't looking forward to coming home on Wednesday because there was some stuff that I actually had to do, but I come home. And my mom's like, oh yeah, Orby over here has been pink all morning. Now, Orby's our router. It's a Netgear Orby I got cheap on eBay. It was used. And it's been pink all morning. I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I go to look at it and I look over at the modem and I notice that the DSL light's blinking. The internet light isn't lit and the DSL light's blinking. I'm like, oh, for the love of God. So it's like we had no internet. Now, my mom is the type of person that when you take something away from her uh, that she's become dependent upon and interrupts her normal flow of things, she gets a little aggravated. I mean, I do too, but not to the extent that she does. So I call the phone company. And because I changed the name on the account, they said, oh, well, we had to cancel the services that were on the previous account. We had to issue you a whole new account, and you should have your service back by the end of the day. You know, it, it'll be back by the end of the day, basically, is what the, the lie, the first, so I was, no, that's the first lie, the second lie they were telling me. So I'm like, okay, end of the day, that's fine. Now, because their hours are wholly messed up there, I didn't know what constituted as the end of the day. So I'm like... All right, I better double check this. So I call him back again. I'm told, oh, it'll be restored by midnight. Not a problem, by midnight. That was lie number two. I'm just counting that all as lie number two. So, <laughs> just you can figure it. Spoilers, I'm telling you, it was lie number two. So lie number two was it'll be fixed by uh, midnight. Come 12.01 a.m. Thursday, I'm supposed to have internet again. Hey, come 3.30 a.m. Thursday when I wake up, hey, there's still no internet. The DSL light's still blinking. I still have nothing. So I'm like, okay, I'll give it till a little later. I can't call him and bitch him out anyway. It's 3.30 in the morning. So I call him back later. I spend two hours... Two hours on hold, being bounced around department to department to department, and it's like, okay, still nothing, still zip, still Zanata, no internet. So I call, so when I'm calling them, and they're like, oh, it'll just give us 24 hours, sir. We will have your service restored in 24 hours, we promise. Lie number three. Because come Friday morning, I still have no internet, I still have no internet, and I still have no internet. So I call them again. Now, apparently they put a ticket in on this one. The ticket says service should be restored by 5 p.m. on the 13th, which is today. I'm a little confused on this, so I go through to their technical support to find out what the hell's going on here. Because all I wanted to do was just change the name on the goddamn account, not go through this entire, you know, shit show. And the, after being bounced around, was the one person, uh, I only got bounced around three times this time, as opposed to the six or seven I was bounced around on Thursday. The person's like, okay, all it needs is to be activated. I don't understand what the deal is here. The one person on Thursday didn't understand what the deal was. So come Thursday, or come Friday, the person's like, well, here, let me, you know, let me send you to the activation department, and they should be able to help you. So she transfers me, and I'm like, okay, good. We're finally going to get somewhere. This is finally going to get resolved. And the activation department's like, oh, well, they only just put the order in today, so you're looking at the 17th. To get your service back and I'm trying my damnedest to explain to the guy no the order was not just put in today she expedited the order that's the person that I literally just got done talking to before I started talking to you they ex you know they put it in to expedite it because all the stuff's already here the lines already here we had service beforehand it just needs to be reactivated because you people disconnected it and you didn't forewarn me you were going to do this 
oh, well, sir, the ticket is basically to inform you that between now and 5 p.m. tomorrow, which would be today, you will receive a phone call from our service department, but your service won't be technically restored until the 17th because the ticket was on, the order was only put in today. And I'm arguing with the guy for like a good five, 10 minutes. And he's, he's refusing to back down. He's refusing to, you know, to acknowledge and listen to what I'm saying. It's like, I understand. So I'm thinking to myself, no, no, you're not understanding. You're not getting it at all. So come freaking, I go get lunch. I'm like, I, I need to step away from this. I'm about to scream. Go get lunch. I come back and I call again and it's like, oh. And the person that I talked to this time actually gave me their name. I'm not going to say it here. They gave me their name. They said, it will be restored 5 o'clock tomorrow because I've been pissing and moaning. I'm getting pushed up the list because I'm aggravated. I'm irritated. They've lied to me now three times, and I'm royally pissed. And they have a notation of this. When you call them, they pull up your account. They have a notation of this. You know, customer is angry. So I haven't had internet at the house since... Wednesday, I've been out internet. Uh, the fire company is very generously allowing me to record my podcast this week, so thank you very much to them for that. So, yeah, I, I haven't had internet for the last few days. I I'm pissed. I'm annoyed. I'm aggravated. I, I finally got my mom to watch The Princess Bride. She's more, I, I think she was more pissed off that she had to watch the movie because the internet was out. She never wanted to watch the movie, and it's like, well, look, the mo it's... You know, this is the perfect opportunity to introduce you to the movie. Well, she didn't like the movie anyway. But I think she was more pissed that she had to watch the movie because the internet was out. I'm pissed because the internet's out and it shouldn't have been out. I was lied to. And when I called back yesterday after the, here, let me go get my lunch and come back. The person was like, well, didn't they tell you you were going to have a service interruption? I mean, we had to disconnect the old service and reactivate it on the new because we had to give you a whole new account. I said, no, I was told I would not have a service interruption. So I was just lied to three times by the phone company. All this because I wanted to change the name on the goddamn account. I should have just said, screw the whole damn thing. and been done with it. So moral of the story, boys and girls, because I don't think my internet's going to be back on 5 o'clock today anyway, because... Oh, let's face it, they've lied to me already three times. What's to stop them from lying to me a fourth time and having an entire weekend to cover their ass? Moral of the story, boys and girls, is whenever you want to get the internet and you want to, you have to change the name on the account, don't bother changing the name on the account. Just get a whole new fucking account at this point, because this is pretty much what they're going to be doing to you. And that's been my week. That, that has literally been my week. I have been in a life and death battle with the phone company over the goddamn internet, and it's pissing me off royally pissing me off then when i'm getting my freebies on my tablet because i'm checking it quick and my kingdom's getting attacked in lord's mobile i my leader just got captured this morning he's going to get executed in a day because the people that well the person that did it's one of the ruling members of the kingdom and they want to execute a lot of uh leaders and get the boost from the altar so that they can make themselves stronger so they can defend the kingdom in the next couple days. And I'm like, oh, that's great. So you're just going to kill my guy to make yourself stronger. Then you're just going to go around and do the whole vicious cycle again. I, I didn't consent to this. But okay, sure. What the hell? Yeah. Anyway, that's been my week. Royal shit show as it was. I did get something special in the mail, though, that uh, I plan on doing a review video of. <laughs> it's going to be one of the couple review videos i did plan to do so that's gonna be interesting but anyway that's been my week how was your week was it fun was it exciting let me know in the comments and while we're at it let's get into the podcast i've been talking for like 10 minutes okay so this was the huge news that dropped last weekend and honest to god you could have knocked my ass over with a feather the minute i found out about it i was as giddy as a school kid i, I was like a five-year-old on christmas morning walking downstairs and seeing all the presents laid out underneath the big ass tree like all for me you could have knocked my ass down with a feather the devil is a part-timer is getting season two it's returning for season two after eight years we are finally going to be returning to you know our favorite characters from Menta isla and the couple humans that we deal with oh it's so beautiful the trailer it's, it's the funny part is I literally, and I'm not even joking on this, 
I literally mentioned that last week in the Rent-A-Girlfriend topic. I said, I can think of another anime that could use a second season. The Devil is a Part-Timer comes to mind. No sooner do I finish the, um, yeah. No sooner do I finish the podcast, I am processing it. Boom. I'm like, oh, let me check Twitter, see what's going on with Twitter. Boom. The Devil's a Part-Timer Season 2 was announced. As I see the tr I see the poster, and I'm like, oh, my God. First, I thought maybe it was like a movie. I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I that's honestly what I thought it was. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe it was basically, what I honestly thought was, okay, maybe it's a movie. We were getting like an OVA movie or something. I'm like, I'm fine with that. And I am. I, I'm perfectly fine with that. If it would have been an OVA movie, I would have been fine with that. No issues whatsoever. But then I'm looking at it, I'm like, no, wait a minute. And I see something about a two, so I watch the trailer. Which, by the way, you can pull up. There's two different links. I have the Crunchyroll uh, article, and I have the Otaku USA article. So, the trailer. I'm looking at the trailer, and I'm like, we're getting season two. Season two. Season freaking two! This thing was amazing. For those of you that don't know anything about it, you slept on this one. Which, why the hell would you? This thing was fucking amazing. You can pull it up on Tubi, for God's sake. It aired from... Well, the first season aired back in 2013, from April 4th to June 27th. It was amazing. You had uh, Sadao Mao, who was basically Satan in the world of Enta Isla. Him and his right-hand man, Asiel, escape Enta Isla after trying to take down the hero Amelia. Well, that didn't work too well. Epic battle. They basically survive, and they're like, ah, oh, we'll be back one day to take over this shithole land. And they head back. And they leave. They end up in our world. No magic, because our world doesn't have that. No ability to regain their magic powers, and they're stranded here. They decide to just take up part-time jobs to survive. You have Sadal working at uh, McDonald's and Asiel doing odd jobs all over the damn place. I freaking love this. <laughs> because by the time the hero Amelia catches their ass, which is the best part of this, she's not going to be satisfied until he's dead. They end up, she ends up catching up to him, and she's basically stuck there because there's no way for her to replenish her magic power either, at least not right away. And she wants to kill him. He has no intention of fighting. He has no intention of taking over the world. In all honesty, he's loving everything we have here. We got manga. We have good food. He's enjoying it. He really could give a flying rat's ass about a Tesla at this point. And it's basically like, oh, no, I'm, not, I'm happy here. It's almost like uh, there was a manga that was put out. It, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of what it was. But basically, it was uh, this one. It was the devil, basically, or a vampire or something. And he was in charge of this area. And a human walked into it. She ended up getting killed. And he was on a mission to try to return her to life. Because he loved everything about humans. He had an entire like manga collection. He's an otaku at heart. A freaking weeb. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. But I was always thinking that when I was watching this. I love the show. Love the series. It's great. So season two gets announced. And I'm like, oh yeah, here we go. So it, it, it was. It was a surprise announcement. This basically, this lit the internet ablaze. Honestly, us weebs and otaku that love this show, we were basically on cloud fucking nine. It's like, yes! I mean, I put it up on Twitter last week when uh, the news dropped about, you know, The Devil is a Part-Timer Season 2. This is pretty much my mood. It was that song, I Feel Fantastic. It's, <laughs> it's basically how it was. I'm like, it's hyper hyperactive. I was excited. Um... So we don't have uh, much information, though. That's the only down part about this. Uh, but it's been about eight years since the anime adaptation of uh, The Devil's a Part-Timer made its debut. The first season ran, like I said, from April to June of 2013. And it's finally coming back with a second season. We're finally getting season two! Yay! Uh, it was made uh, last weekend during the Kodakawa Light Novel Festival. Uh, bringing it, bringing with it the first trailer, 
uh, key visual and news that the first season's cast will be reprising their roles. So we are getting the original. We are getting the original cast. And you can. This is one of the series you can watch either subbed or dubbed. It doesn't matter. I personally, I'm not gonna lie. I think the sub version actually was a little more better than the dub version. But if you can watch it dubbed, they're both good. Uh, hopefully the. Uh, original English cast will be able to reprise their roles, I'm kind of hoping, but we're getting the original cast either way, I'm happy with that. So the first season's cast will be reprising their roles, but there isn't much more information, though, to go on right now. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be the same studio that was in charge of it the first time, we don't know if uh, we're getting, you know, let's say, uh, anything else. I mean, the light novels were preparing to end, uh, there was an article about that last year, uh, in April of last year, that their light novels were preparing to end. I think I talked about that. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, holy crap. I I'm just, I I'm freaking excited. I'm not even joking. Uh, White Fox animated the first season back in 2013 under the direction of uh, Nato or Naoto um, Hosoda. Uh, though the staff for the second season has not yet been revealed. Uh, there is clearly a difference in the art style, though, if you look at the trailer between the first and second seasons. It, granted, it could also just be technology. It could also be, you know, it's been eight fucking years, so there is that. So, hopefully we're getting, hopefully White Fox is still going to be animating this. Um, hopefully Funimation is still going to be, I, I was pretty sure that this was a Funimation title. I'm almost certain this was a Funimation title. So, hopefully Funimation will keep this one. Uh, and it's not going to get shoved off to, like, let's say, Viz or something. Because I, I don't I don't think this would work well for Viz. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully this stays with uh, Funimation. I swear this was a Funimation one. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. The gang's all... The gang's coming back! <laughs> We're finally getting them back. Um, and here's how Funimation, uh, who streams the first season on its service, uh, described it. Uh, fooled or foiled by the hero when he's inches away from conquering the world the devil finds himself in modern day tokyo with no real world skills to speak of the devil is forced to make ends meet flipping burgers at a fast food joint <laughs> to stall any further plans of world domination the hero tracks the devil's trail and takes on the lowly tasks of a telemarketer that's what the hero Amelia does. She's a telemarketer. And Sadal, like I said, he works at McDonald's with uh, the human companion that he met, Chio. She's really nice. She likes him, doesn't want to admit it. There's a nice little um, romance type thing there. That, that's kind of interesting. Uh, you got Lucifer, who's a freaking jackass that they've kind of taken in. And pretty much keep under their thumb because he, <laughs> he screwed him over pretty good. He keep him under their thumb. Uh, you got Osiel. Uh, there's... The one neighbor that isn't, it's another person from anti East. Like I can't, I, I actually cannot think of her name because she only shows up in the second half of the first season. And I don't even know, I, I can't figure out what exactly her, her purpose was. And then in the uh, key visual here, there's a new character kind of attached herself to Sadao in the picture, uh, the blue haired girl. So I, I don't know what's going on with that. But either way, I'm ecstatic. The devil's a part timer. It's coming back. We're getting season two! Season two! Baby, I'm excited for this. I'm looking forward to this. You can knock my ass over with a feather for this. Oh, I cannot wait for more information to come out. Uh, it was an unexpected announcement. It's likely welcomed by many. Oh, you bet your ass. It is welcome by me. It is freaking welcomed by me, uh, including those who need more whack Donalds in their life. Uh, basically, because they can't use certain... And this is a fun thing. They can't use certain copyrights in uh, anime titles unless the companies pay for them. That's why if you ever notice, they call, like, in this series, McDonald's. It's basically called McRonald's. It's not copyright infringement if it's not the... I mean, it sounds the same, but it's not the same. So it's not copyright infringement, and it technically isn't. And that's how they can get away with it. It's like, oh, well, McDonald's might, you know, sponsor enough of it, but they don't want their name in it. So, so, okay, we'll just change it to McRonald's. Is that fine by you? Yeah, works for me. Uh, the only time that this is ever different is with Sony because they freaking piss the money away to make sure that if they're holding a game console controller, it says Sony on it. If they're holding a PSP, it says Sony on it. They want you to know that they put money into this. It's like, okay, that's fine. 
Uh, but yeah, I I'm ecstatic for this. We're getting season two. It's coming back, baby. I I I'm ecstatic. I'm happy about this. I love every second of this. I am just... I am flat out in love with this. I, th this was the best news, I think, that could have came out of last weekend. Uh, I wanted to talk... I, I was pissed that I missed it by literally minutes to talk about this. But no, I was like, I'm talking about it this week. It's topic number one, baby. Because I am fucking amazed right now. I'm happy about this. This is amazing. Because the trailer even shows off the characters again. We see Chio, Sadao, uh, Amelia, Asiel, Lucifer... The other chick whose name I, honest to God, cannot think of off the top of my head. But we see all of them. The gang's all back together. It, it, I just love this. Basically, it's like the joke with the, uh, what the hell was it? The Country Bears were getting the band back together. Well, they're getting a the band back together, damn it. The band's back together. And they're coming. And we're, I cannot wait to see what they have down the pipeline for us. This is going to be amazing. Ah. <sighs> I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm just I'm just tickled pink by it. Uh, check out the trailer, uh, the preview trailer, in either of the uh, top, either of the articles. Uh, check out the new visual, the poster, which is kick ass. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm loving every minute of this, baby. This is this is exciting. This is like Christmas, my birthday, and freaking any other holiday where you can get uh, gifts all rolled into one for like the next two years. This is amazing. I'm happy about this. I guarantee you so many other people are ecstatic because the internet was blowing up, Twitter was blowing up, weebs everywhere are uniting. This is a moment that we cannot, you know, just let pass by. This is amazing. Uh, the Devil's a Part-Timer Season 2 is coming back. Yes! We're getting Season 2! Season 2! Alright, so... I know I've talked about this multiple times. Uh, Comic Cat. I, I remember talking about Comic Cat 98 because they had the uh, issues that one year because of it being extremely hot. People were passing out. I talked about it last year because they had to postpone it. They were planning to do it uh, sometime during the winter. Then they had to postpone it again. Now, this time, though, Comic Cat 99. Because I think it was 98 that they were that they ended up, I think they, did they ended up canceling that one, I think, if I remember right, they canceled it, I don't, don't quote me on that one, I don't actually remember anymore, this has been one of those massively long events here, but Kami Kent 99 has been postponed again, uh, due to Tokyo's state of emergency extension, now this happened, uh, again, last week, so it would have been March 8th, so this would have been, um, this would have been, what, Monday, let me pull up my calendar here, let me pull up my handy dandy calendar. Yes, Monday. Okay, so this came out on Monday. So originally, uh, this was set for May 2nd through the 4th. The Tokyo's big site uh, plans for Comic Cat 99 have changed due to the recent extended state of emergency in the greater Tokyo area. Uh, while they're still aiming to hold the event under the same name, preparations have shifted to winter of 2021, marking the third postponement or cancellation of a physical Comic Cat. Uh, events since the start of the pandemic. Uh, even beyond the current state of emergency, events will likely be limited to fewer than 10,000 people. And if you remember, uh, the one comic cat that I talked about brought in a shit ton of people, and that was uh, one of their concerns last year. But this also includes staff members, um, you know, including the staff members, so that's not good. And since Comic Cat typically pulls in uh, 20 to 30 times those numbers, like 20, 30,000 or more, uh, and just attendees alone, uh, it makes it difficult to run anything close to full capacity. Uh, Comic Cat 99 committee is currently in talks with the Tokyo government about the situation, as well as ways to help uh, the doujinshi artists who will be missing out on a major source of their income and exposure. And again, I just want to stress this one here. For those of you out there that think that this is, that doujinshi is porn, no, it just gets a very, 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 very bad reputation. Uh, in fact, go talk to Negative Legend. He actually did an entire video on it. He actually literally explained uh, the definition of it and then explained why people seem to take it uh, out of context. So, yeah, thank you very much to him for that. 
Uh, but on their official Twitter, they made the announcement. Uh, following the extension of the state of emergency declaration uh, and related government policies, we are regrettably postponing Comet, Comic Market 99, or Comic Cat 99, originally planned for May 2nd through 4th, uh, 2021 at the Tokyo Big Site. We thank you for your understanding. And they have a link to their website. Uh, I don't think I can actually pull. Oh, no, I should be able to pull that up. It shouldn't take me. Yeah, it shouldn't take me to Twitter. Should I should just pull right up the article. Uh, yep, here we go. Sending it to their site. And hopefully I'll get translated here. Okay. All right, so here we go. Uh, about postponement of Comic Market 99. By the way, I will link this in the... Uh, I mean, you can click the thing, but I'm going to link it anyway quick before I forget. Because I'm sometimes an idiot. Okay, there we go. Because I'm sometimes an idiot. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> about postponement of Comic Market 99. We would like to inform you that Comic Market 99 at Tokyo Big Site, which was scheduled to be held from May 2nd to 4th of 2021, will be postponed. As explained in Comic Market 99 and future events announced in announced on November 17th, 2020, Comic Market 99 is a response to prevent infections. Wow, okay, it's a response to prevent infection with the new coronavirus at exhibitions, etc. at Tokyo Big Site. While keeping an eye on the guidelines and status of events held at the time, it is not possible at Comic Market 99 to hold 200,000 people a day like before. That's being generous, I think, because I think the one they brought in a hell of a lot more than that. Uh, and under various restrictions, tens of thousands a day. We have made a plan on the premise that the number of visitors must be about the size of a person and have a various and have made various studies, adjustments, and preparations for the realization of the event. On December 10th, 20, uh, 2020, as a member of uh, Dojin Japan 2020, those serialist is the host uh, whose serialist is the host organization, such as the Dojinchi Convention at Tokyo Big Site. Uh, the new coronavirus infection COVID-19 outbreak, uh, we have created and released the guidelines for holding dojinji conventions. And it's below here, by the way. Uh, this guideline was created uh, with the cooperation of the infectious disease specialists such as Professor Masudo Kaku, Department of Infectious Diseases, uh, Tohoku Medical and Pharmaceutical University School of Medicine, the Cabinet Secretary, uh, the Secretary of the New Coronavirus Infectious Disease Control Promotion Office, basically just citing a bunch of uh, businesses and uh, organizations here. I don't want to name them all, I don't want to butcher them. Uh, Tokyo Big Site uh, Company, or Corporation LTD uh, thing. Uh, Comic Market 99 has also been preparing to hold the event on the premise of, a prop, uh, of appropriate measures against the new uh, infection based on the guidelines. However, in connection uh, with the new coronavirus infection, a second state of emergency was issued on January 7th of 2021. That's really bad, actually. I remember when that happened. And the period was extended by one month on February 7th. Furthermore, on February 26th, the cabinet secretaries... It literally says secretariat here. I'm not even joking. Uh, new Coronavirus Infectious Disease Control Promotion Office issued regarding restrictions on holding events, restrictions on facility use, etc. Based on, uh, based on the basic coping policy, the number of people accommodated in the event is set at the transitional period until April 11th. After the state of emergency is lifted regarding the holding of events, after the state of emergency is lifted, the upper... Well, I actually read that... No, they said it twice. Okay. Uh, the upper limit is set as the upper limit is 5,000 people or 50% of the capacity, whichever is larger, or 10,000 people, whichever is smaller. It is expected that strict restrictions will be imposed. If the maximum number of visitors per day, including not only general participation, but also circle participation, staff participation, and other participants, reaches 10,000, the expected range of the plan that was being prepared will be greatly expanded. The reality is that it is difficult to hold Comic Market 99 as planned. After that, on March 5th, the declaration of emergency for one metropolitan area and three prefectures, including Tokyo, was, was extended for two weeks. 
but at the same time, holding of events in specific prefectures due to the extension of the emergency declaration, etc. Unlike the above mentioned notes on February 26th, uh, they did not clarify or clearly indicate the end uh, time of the transitional measure period. Basically, they can't have a crap ton of people showing up. L let me summarize this because this is starting to get, I, I don't know if translation was screwing this up or what, but here's basically the general gist of it, and I'll get back into the rest of it here. They can't have more than like 5,000 people or 50% of the capacity or 10,000 people, whichever is smaller. They can't have that. that. That's like the minimum they can have. That's the upper limit. That That's it. And if they basically exceed that, they're in trouble. They don't want to try to jeopardize this because you're looking at possibly 200,000 people, and that includes the staff, the artists, and the you know participants and all that shit. That number is going to escalate quickly. And, I mean, you could probably get like 10,000 artists there, and that's it. That's it. Nobody can come because all you have is artists. Well, artists don't like mingling with other artists because that basically pisses them off. I mean, you ever go to an art exhibition and... You know, you see all the artists standing around. They're all, you know, taking jabs at one another because they think their shit's better than you. It's not that difficult. But, uh, yeah. So, therefore, um, according to the article here, if the state of emergency is lifted on March 21st, the transitional period up to 10,000 people may be extended uh, to 2021 GW. I don't know what the hell that means. In addition, even if the transitional period is the same as before, which is one month, until around April 25th, it is possible that the restrictions on holding the event will continue in another way. However, at this time, the maximum number of people that can be accommodated at the 2021 GW uh, event at the time of Comic Market 99 is not set. And the upper limit I mentioned earlier may not be 10,000 people. However, even if the... Yeah, even, yeah. however, if the event is abandoned or uh, and canceled or postponed immediately before, it will have a greater impact on the participants and related parties. Considering such a big risk and considering that announcing the postponement, etc., after the winning of the circle will be a burden on the production work of the doujinshi and everyone in the circle, we have to decide the postponement of holding it at this time. I came to this conclusion that I couldn't do it. I'm literally reading off the off the thing here from their site, by the way. If you think I'm making any of this up, I'm literally reading it right off their website. Uh, many circles who applied for circles, I'm not even joking here, uh, with strong expectations for Comic Market 99, uh, general participants who were looking forward to applying for general participation, planning and examining various tasks that are significantly different from the past, we would like to take this opportunity to apologize and thank all the staff at the Comic Market prep, yeah, prepared, yeah, Proprietary Committee. I knew I was going to mess that's why I had to make sure I wasn't going to stutter that. Uh, who have continued to do so. And all the people who have prepared and cooperated with us for the event. We will continue to make efforts to maintain... <sighs> Sorry about that. Uh, we will continue to make efforts to maintain the place and continue to hold as much as possible. I hold it as much as possible. We would appreciate it if you could continue to understand and cooperate with the participants and related parties. As I said, when Comic Mar... Okay, so 98 was canceled. All right. I wasn't sure if it was canceled or postponed again. As I said, when Comic Market 98 was canceled... Not only the Jojinshi convention, including the comic market, but also various events, exhibitions, and conventions have different scales, regions, and characteristics. I will, the postponement of Comic Market 99 is a decision based on the characteristics of Comic Market and the current situation. Please refrain from making inquiries to other events, exhibitions, spot sales, etc. again, as this may cause unnecessary confusion. So thank you, Google Translate, for messing up some of that, making me sound like an asshole. But basically, they can't have the event if they can only have X amount of people. And like I said, if you have like 10,000 artists and you're only allowed a maximum of 10,000 people, that's it. And there's no safe way to do that. I mean, I, even I can understand it because you have staff, you have artists, and you have people coming in. There is literally no safe way to do this that you're not going to get screwed somehow. So... 
yeah, I get it. So uh, underneath here, they got various measures uh, for postponement. Uh, for circle participants, today they will not... Dis uh, stay. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm literally just going to read it. Uh, today we will not announce the winning of the Comic Market 99 circle scheduled for March 8th. Regarding the postponement of the event, we will contact you and announce the handling of the circle you applied for within the next month by email or official website. For general participants, the Comic Market 99 catalog, which is scheduled to be held from May 2nd to 4th, will not be published in the booklet version, DVD-ROM version, or web version. No company booth pamphlet will be issued. The exhibitors and etc. We will contact you individually. <laughs> I mean, it, it does kind of suck though, but yeah. And about the future here, the final part on their uh, thing here. Regarding the postponed Comic Market 99 schedule, we are aiming to hold it in the winter of 2021. But it's, uh, it is unknown at this time how the venue usage of Tokyo Big Site will be. It is also necessary to consider the future situation regarding the new coronavirus infection. Uh, it says on here, I will let you know when the situation becomes clear. Uh, during this time, as a member of the Dojin Japan 2020 uh, Secretariat, we spoke to multiple members of the yeah, right. so they basically spoke to a lot of people about the predicament of various individuals and corporations uh, related to the convention and various things to the government in Tokyo. Uh, they thank them for their support because I'm tired of Google's translation messing me up, by the way. That's why I'm just paraphrasing now. Uh, see, they like to take this opportunity to express their gratitude to all the people involved in the government in Tokyo for their support. Uh, the doujinshi conventions and customer drawing entertainment are severely affected by the new infection. Uh, they are There are many related individuals and, cor and corporations. It is also a very broad-based culture and industry. Uh, they would like to ask for the further support of the government and local governments. They would also like to... Uh, to Express their sincere respect and gratitude for the efforts of the many people, including healthcare professionals who are confronting the infection. Uh, they hope that one, they hope the day will come when all participants, when all the doujinshi conventions and not just comic market, will be able to get out of this difficult situation as soon as possible. And they believe that the accumulation of individual measures will bring it closer. So basically, they thank everybody. That that was the last part. So. You're not going to have... It's been postponed. I know that... I think it was like the opening of uh, Super Nintendo World was slightly postponed. I think the Olympics at this point are up in the air slash a joke anymore. Uh, who the hell knows what's going on? But basically, Comic uh, Comic Cat 99 has been postponed. Hoping to have it in winter. Um, if it's not going to happen in winter, it's just not going to happen at all. But that's basically it. That That's all I got. That's all there is. So, it sucks. Yeah, but hey... What are you going to do, right? Okay, so I remember years ago, I think it was like a couple years ago, actually, I watched a Watch Mojo video. It was one of the last ones I had watched for the longest time because I have no respect for that channel whatsoever. I have no respect for that site whatsoever. I have no respect for those people. They, they stole from other YouTubers and they steal from other people and they claim it research. I have no respect for that. But I remember that there was a special guest... Uh, person that did the narrating for the video that got my attention, Todd Habercorn. And it was the top 10 stupidest anime names. It was like names of series in anime history. So he basically, he rattled off the top 10 list and he did it in his own special way. And for those of you that don't know, Tad, uh, Todd Habercorn is the voice of Jocko on uh, Dragon Ball Super. He was Jocko. So there is that. So, I think this one would definitely make that list. I, I could see him pissing and moaning about this title, uh, nonetheless. Um, but the Full Dive RPG anime series uh, is sharing new visual and its amazing official title. Uh, it's not that amazing, by the way. Spoiler. Uh, but it's based on the light novel series known as... Uh, I'm going to mispronounce. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to try uh, it's based on the light novel. It's known as uh, Kyu Koku uh, Shinka Shita Full Dive RPG Ga Genju Genjitsu Yormi or Yormo Kusugi. 
Fuck it. I, I, it's just call a full dive. Let's just call a full dive. I'm not trying to get this. Uh, it's by the cautious hero author uh, Light uh, Tuchichi, or Tuchihi, I guess. I don't even know how to pronounce that one. Uh, the full dive RPG anime adaptation, though, is on its way this April, uh, according to Kodo <laughs> Kadokawa, uh, updated on the series, uh, with a new visual, or new key visuals, revealing the amazing official English title. And, uh, sorry about that. Kind of, my brain's trying to catch up with me here. So they uh, also released not only the new key visuals, but the amazing official English title in the process. So here is the English title. Drum, can I get a drum roll, please? Full Dive. This ultimate next-gen Full Dive RPG is even shittier than real life. Yeah, that is literally the English title. Um... That is it. I was just called it full dive RPG or something. Uh, this is Jesus Christ. Um, no. But it pretty much says it all. Uh, you can see more of the official website. Oh, what the hell? Let's check out the official website. And the new key visual below, which is pretty cool. Uh, definitely something in here for everybody. Uh, there's like a giant boobed fairy in the background. Not even joking. Uh, huge boobed fairy in the background. Um, you got what looks to be a uh, knight in golden armor. Um, I'm assuming Satan's little sister. Uh, there's, yeah, there's like a whole bunch here that you got a scared uh, person and there's just like this massive thing in the background. Yeah, okay. I just cannot believe that they actually have this as a, th that's the actual title. This ultimate next gen full dive RPG is even shittier than real life. Really. Really. That's bullshit to me. How in the hell do you justify that as a title? I don't, I don't, that's not even a title. That's basically an, ast an assumption, a statement, but I don't know. That's, that's a title. I thought it would have been like full dive RPG or, you know, RPG full dive or something. I, I don't know. That is just stupid. I, I just... Really? And you go onto their website, and it's doing this really cool loading thing here, which I guess hopefully it'll make some sense. Hopefully it'll load up. But, yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, the, promos, the promo uh, debuted back in December. Uh, the series is being directed by Uzaki-chan wants to hang out. Uh, Kazuya Miura, which I'm not... I'm not mad with because I love Uzaki Chan wants to hang out. That's I was laughing my ass off every single moment of it. Uh, let's see here. The cautious hero is overpowered but overly cautious uh, on serious composition uh, for the ENGI production. Uh, stay tuned for more information as we get closer to the premiere, basically, is all the article says. But let's check out their official website uh, now that it loaded. Holy shit, this is actually pretty sweet. God damn. Okay, yeah, this is definitely pretty cool. Um, you got a couple videos over here. Like I said, just weird ass shit here. Uh, let's see here, uh, 27th and blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's see, there's music information disclosure, uh, collaboration, illustration with the cost hero has arrived, uh, broadcast information lifted. Second P view release, key visual release, official website's open. That's all the news they have here. Wow. That's that's it. They have an official Twitter. Um yeah. There isn't really much here, but uh Oh, there's a story. Oh, okay, cool. We can actually find some information on this, I I, I guess. Okay. Please tell me that there's a point to this. Um, okay, not exactly much. It's just, why is it not translating? You're supposed to translate! Translate, goddamn you! Don't just translate the title! Oh, you stupid, stupid thing. Oh, okay, um, I can't... Oh, it's probably a freaking image. That, yeah, it's an image, that's why. Oh, of course you're an image. That's why it can't translate you. 
Okay, so I can't read any of it, so I don't know. What the hell? All right, hold on. What, the, what is the plot of Full Dive? Hold on. Let me let me go to my trusty resource, to my uh, research, to my crack research team. Yeah. Let me go to my crack research team. I call them the Google. Okay. Here we go. Let me go to my crack research team. I call them the Google. Ah, arigato, Google. Do we have a plot here? No. You're kidding me. What's the plot of this thing? God <laughs> damn. Ah, what is the plot of this piece of... What is this thing's plot? Ah, uh, let's see here. Funimation blog. Okay, here's a thing. Here's a thing from a week ago on Funimation's website. Please tell me there's an answer here that tells me what the plot of this thing is. <sighs> okay. Uh, so, uh, damn pop-ups. Okay, here we go. Finally. All right, here we go. Uh, it's from light. Uh. To Chi Chi, like I said, uh, creator of the Cautious Hero, or Cautious Hero, the hero is overpowered but overly cautious. I actually saw some clips of that. It is pretty good. Uh, the series follows high schooler Hiro Yuki, H I R O U K I, not even joking, and his adventure with Kiwame. Yeah, Kiwami Quest. Oh, okay, it's a game. The hottest full dive RPG on the market. Of course, the game builds itself as an adventure that takes reality to its breaking point. The result of cutting edge game design and technology. Oh, and did we mention players in the game retain their physical prowess from real life? So if you're not at your fittest peak, this is going to be a tough one. Also, you get hurt in real life. If you're damaged in the game. Oh, that, oh, that, that's, uh... So in other words, you die in the game, you die in real life. Oh, that's great. Uh, there's no playing casual, but there are plenty of fantasy and comedy to go around. Okay. Uh, yeah. Alright, so this is basically a really interesting... It really is an overly boob pixie. Holy shit. That's, yeah, okay. Damn, well, that's gonna get the, um... Opi crowd, definitely. Fan service, 100%. Uh, wow. And it's Funimation. Okay, so Funimation's getting it this spring. Okay, thank God for that. Okay, so... Basically, the kid plays an RPG game that's, um... Basically a full dive virtual game, and anything that happens to you in the game happens, and any damage you take, you could possibly die. Cool. Got it. Sounds interesting. It's basically, think, um, SAO, but not with the, uh... You're trapped in the game, but more like, uh, dot .hack, where you can log out of the game, but you can still die in the game, you die in real life. Okay, now you got my attention. I mean, I, I thought the, you know, visuals were pretty cool. Like I said, the, I did not notice the pixie. Honest to God, I only noticed that today. But I mean, like, the characters in that that I saw, I thought, okay, this looks pretty interesting. Now I finally see what the plot is. Okay, now I'm a little more, now I'm a little more excited for this. But holy hell, <laughs> freaking pixie, Jesus Christ. It's a freaking... It's either a fairy or a pixie. One of the two. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, wow! <laughs> it's kind of making that meme I saw years ago where he had those four panels. It's like, this is why you should never let your kids uh, watch anime. And it's like, she's 10 years old. Her boobs aren't supposed to be that big. You know, um... <sighs> there's like a few of... Oh, yeah. Uh, this, uh, there's like two of them that I like, the boob one, and then there's the, uh, other panel, and it's like, you know, she's half girl, half cat. What type of sick, twisted bestiality are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, she's, uh, your waifu. She's, uh, a cartoon. She's not your wife. And the one was like, we used to be at war with, Ch I think it was, we used to be at war with China, young lady. And it's like, okay. It, it was a meme. I think you still, pl hey, can I still pull that up? Hold on. Hold on, I want to make sure I'm getting this right, because I remember, I don't think I have it anymore. Uh, oh, I think I, I remember it. Okay, let me try. Not 
much anime meme. Okay, I don't think I can find it by Google searching, and I don't think I actually have it on me anymore, so that kind of sucks. Yeah. But no, I remember that, because it's like... Yeah, it was basically... Uh, it was a four-panel one. I remember that. It was four panels. And it was basically... The one was, you know, if she's 10 years old, her boobs shouldn't be that big. You know, she's a drawing. She's not your wife. She's half, you know, that's half, that's a half girl, half cow. What type of sick, twisted bestiality are you watching? And we used to be at war with China. That, that China young lady. Th those were the four parts of it. I cannot, I saw it on Facebook. And I don't think it exists anymore. God damn, that really pisses me off. Uh, hold on, let me try one last thing. Uh, I have to add one word. And no, damn. Okay, I thought maybe if I tried one last idea that I'd be able to pull it up, and nope, I don't see it. But I just remember that because it's like I remember the what type of sick twisted bestiality. <laughs> Like what type of sick twisted bestiality are you watching? I just, I just, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will never forget that as long as I live. But yep. So, yeah, I can't. I don't have it. I'm pretty sure somebody out there has probably seen it. If you have, cool. If I find it, well, hell, you should know where it is by now. I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it at one point or another. But yeah, it, that's basically the joke of it. It was hilarious as hell. I remember laughing my ass off. Because <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Uh, hold on. Let me try one. Uh, I might have one last idea. Hold on. Okay, well, all right, I thought I'd give it one more shot. Didn't work. Okay, so basically, yeah, if you've seen it, as I'm pretty sure you probably have, um, it's probably out there somewhere. I'm sure somebody's seen it, but I just, I'll never forget it. It made me laugh my ass off, but yeah. So, okay, th this kind of has my attention then, basically. But the name, though, that needs to be fucking changed. I'm not even that 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 name has got to get changed. It, that's got to change. That is n no, shorten it or something. That no, that name sucks. Okay, so if you've listened to the podcast before, you obviously remember that I was ecstatically happy when Shaman King was announced. They were getting a whole new anime. Like it was getting a reboot. I was like, oh, okay, th this had my attention because originally Shaman King aired on Fox. It was like Fox Kids. It was the, no, it was the Fox Box at the time. That's what it was fucking called, the Fox Box. You know, when Fox tried their damnedest to be cool, and they weren't cool. They, they were still lame, but they were a higher grade of lame, basically. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I remember mentioning in there that it really got screwed over because I didn't even... I had to pull up when it ended. It ended when I was in school. Um, I watched the final episode that one Saturday, and it just kind of ends with a, meh, it's coming back, because they had to restart the Shaman Tournament, so, okay, cool. But the reboot is officially, um, coming out, and unfortunately, for me anyway, I'm not happy about this, it has a home for audiences around the world, and this home honestly hurts. The reboot is officially set to stream on Netflix in 2021. And a new English sub trailer is here along with the announcement. And God damn it, Netflix. Why did you have to take this one? I, I this when I saw this, I saw this after the whole Devil's a part timer thing. I was like, oh my God, please don't let them take please don't let Netflix take that one. 
I will raise the holiest rant in hell if Netflix takes The Devil as a part-timer season two. You do not deserve that. That is a damn good series. You stay the hell away from that one, okay? You don't bother that one. That, that one does not need to be bothered. But, yes, so the announcement trailer came out, so we're getting the de we're getting, um, you know, the reboot, and it's going to Netflix. It's going to stream on Netflix. It's fucking Pokemon Journeys all over again. Now, and the, the kicker is that I know somebody out there is going to go, but Andrew, you know how Netflix works. Yes, I know how Netflix works. Everything gets dropped right at one time. There's no weekly release dates unless they change their tune and they change their tone the last couple months. I don't know. So, because I remember watching the one Pokemon Journeys when we all thought Pikachu was going to evolve. God, thank God that didn't happen. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie. I had an entire rant prepared that would have shook the rafters of the world if Pikachu would have evolved into Raichu. As she's Pikachu evolving, I would have had a rant of rants. I was all prepared for it. I was all set and ready to just raise holy hell. Didn't happen. So, like, my anger was quelled. <laughs> it's like, it didn't happen. We all breathed a sigh of relief. It's like, oh, thank God, this didn't happen. Yeah, we were all happy about that. But we also got to reveal, though, with this new announcement that uh, Megumi Hashiabara, uh, known for her roles ranging from Rei Ayanami in Evangelion to, Lin, uh, to Lena Inverse in Slayers, uh, and many more, is highlighted in her recently released memoirs, uh, will sing both the opening and ending themes. The anime will kick off with the Soul Salvation opening, uh, previewed in the new trailer, and will end with um, Hayaba <laughs> Hayashi uh, Hayashibara's... Uh, you're kidding me. <laughs> Boku no... You be Saki, or hashtag my fingertips. Whatever. Uh, check out the promo, though, on the article here. There's a new key visual. Yeah, this is all good news and everything, except for the fact that it's going to Netflix. It's, it's going to be a Netflix show. I'm not happy about that. And we're getting, like, a couple of voice actors are coming back. There's going to be, like, a whole bunch of, uh, you know, stuff is returning. I'm fine with that. But it's going to Netflix, and I'm just, I'm not down with that. That That's the one thing. I mean, I was so excited when I heard Shaman King's coming back. I'm like, sweet God, yes. Holy jeez. I, I was excited. And then it's basically, oh, it's going to Netflix. Here's my excitement level. Find out it's going to Netflix, and it's still falling. You heard it hitting the ground at like Mach 10, and it's still going into the center of the earth. I don't think it's hit the core yet. It's traveling pretty damn fast. And yeah, it's just, it's not good. I, I don't, uh, no, I, I, I don't, I'm not down for this. Netflix is not a home for anime. Um, they want to be a home for it. They want to be a home for everything, basically, and they suck at it. Uh, I'm not happy about the fact that it's going to Netflix. That's pissing me off uh, to no end because I kind of feel like Netflix is just trying to, you know, capitalize on it, make a cash grab at it, and it pisses me off that they're doing it. But at the same time, I can't really say anything about it because I have no say in this. Um. I mean, you could have easily put this up on YouTube, released it every week. Or hell, do like what um the one YouTube channel did, which still pisses me off. It's like, oh, here, we'll re-release, you know, the, uh, it was, the, was it the Tobiyashi or Tobiyara uh, YouTube channel or Subiyara? They uh, were releasing Gridman. You could watch Gridman. And then all of a sudden, can't watch it in this country. It's region locked again. I'm like, you sons of bitches! You region locked me after it was like episode. Tw it was like episode ten, and I got region locked. There's freaking Reconquista and G all over again with Gundam. I'm like, you bastards! Because all of a sudden I'm watching now the official Gundam YouTube channel, and it's like, cool, this is really great. Then all of a sudden I go to watch the next episode when it premieres, and it's like, oh yeah, no, it's region locked. Region locked? What the? F Why is it region locked? What the hell? What, what the fuck? I want to know what happens. Nope, you're never going to find out now. Oh, god damn it. 
I mean, they could have just did that, but of course, they don't want to take the easy way out. And I can understand why a lot of places and companies that don't want to use YouTube as their platform because you can easily get, you know, just like rip the stuff off of there. However, there is a way to prevent this. Uh, if you've ever checked out the YouTube movies, that's something that people can't physically like rip off because there's a line of code that prevents that from happening. I've actually read up on this, by the way, because I was a little weary about that myself, and I was looking into that, reading a couple articles, and then one person goes, no, because there's a couple lines of code in there that if you even try to put it into a downloader, it'll instantly it'll come up as an error. It errors it because it makes it like it's giving you a line of code like it's a playlist or, and if you try doing it like a playlist, it gives you a line of code that it's, you know, something like, it's like an image or something only. So it's giving a line of code that's skewing the downloader. So you don't have to worry about that. And that would be my solution for this. Is like, look, just do that. You know, just put the line of code in that you can't download the stuff. Problem freaking solved. Unless they pay for it. And then you're getting money. You can run your own ads in this thing. You can take care of all that. But nope, it's got to go to Netflix. Why Netflix? Why does it got... Why does Netflix have to take every goddamn fucking thing? Okay, that, 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 there, I finally said it. Why, is it. why does Netflix have to do that to me? You know, why Netflix? What, does, what, what have I ever done to deserve this? What have any of us ever done? All Netflix does is screw people to the wall. They screw everybody over. It's screw you. And you know what? Fine. Screw me. Right? Yeah. Screw me. Fine. So screw me. But at the same time, I'm still pissed about this. I'm happy that... Shaman King's coming back. It's probably going to be something akin to like what Full Metal Alchemist did with Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But I'm now pissed that it's going to be on Netflix. You could have given like Toonami a shot for this thing. You could have like put it up on like one of the official anime streaming networks or something. You could have put it up on something. Netflix? You had to give it to Netflix? Netflix? Really? You couldn't have done, like, Crunchyroll or partner to deal with Funimation. Netflix. You had to go with Netflix. That That's what bothers me with this. But, yeah. So, it's... it's fuck it. It's going to hell. That Well, that series is done before it even started, folks. <sighs> Didn't even have a chance. Alright, so, this is kind of interesting. So a Japanese uh, RPG tavern apparently exists, and they'll send you on some side quests. This is actually pretty cool. I, I kind of think this is an interesting idea. Now, don't get me wrong. Is there like a level of weariness to this? Oh, you bet your sweet ass there is. But I still think this is a kind of cool idea. So the Bokensha Guild Tavern, uh, translated as Adventurer's Guild Tavern, is a real-life tavern in Japan meant to look and feel as if it comes straight out of a role-playing game. Uh, you got menu items including the Wavern's Claw and Meat with Bones of Demon Beasts. I'm not even kidding. That, 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 that actually sounds terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah, I want some Meat with Bones of Demon Beasts. <laughs> uh, yeah. And the decor has a medieval European fantasy element. Definitely would be out of place in Japan, but just, yeah, okay, that, yeah, that should be easy to find then. <laughs> but it even has a quest board that offers side quests for dedicated role players. You know, when you want to take your RPG to the next level, and you, you know, you're sick and tired of, you know, RL, you want to go RPG RL, or RL RPG. Now you can finally do that. <laughs> Uh, one quest would ask you to go to, like, the nearby train station to make sure no one suspicious is there. Another sends you to Hiroshima uh, Peace Memorial so you can come back and say what you've seen. Uh, you can even get guild points by doing these quests. So, uh, basically, this is something that fun that people can, like, plan at days. Like, ah, I'm going to go do some quests. Uh, by the way, they actually tell you where the tavern is located in here. Uh, it's the Kana it's the Kanagawa Prefecture, right by Yamato Station. 
Uh, but yeah, this is kind of cool, uh, honestly, because it's like, eh, it's sort of entertaining in a way, I guess you could say. But yeah, I, I kind of get the kick out of this. Now, like I said, is there like a an air of like caution to this that I would bear? Oh, you bet your sweet ass there is. I'd be like, um, yeah, um, I, yeah, okay, go to the train station to see if anybody's suspicious and make sure no one's suspicious is there. Okay, so I go to the nearby train station and let's say somebody suspicious is there. Then what the hell do I do? Uh, contact the cops? I can go, well, I just lost the, well, yeah, I went to the train station. Somebody suspicious was there, so I called the cops. <laughs> it's like, okay, um, how do you claim the, pro you know, how do you claim afterwards that, oh, yeah, I did this. Yeah, I did that quest. I did that quest. I mean, they'd be open to everybody, so it is basically like an RPG tavern in a way. But, I mean, what, is a bartender, like, an NPC? I, there's, like, a couple questions here that they don't answer, but it terrifies me more knowing that uh, they have some quests on here. Like, what are all the quests? I mean, okay, granted, the there's one that will send you to the Hiroshima uh, Peace Memorial, and you just come back and say what you've seen. Well, if you've already been there, you kind of know what it is, but yeah, just go there anyway. It's a nice little trip. But still, you know, that's the thing about this. This is interesting. Now, would something like this swing over here in the States? Oh, probably, actually. Um, you'd be surprised what people will do at bars. Uh, and you could even make this, you know, as long as you don't serve any alcohol. And I mean that literally, like, you don't serve any alcohol. You could actually make this open for, like, teenagers and that. Give them something to fucking do. Because then you can, like, fix it up with, uh, like, location markers and have it be like a little, have it be like a, an app for their phone or something. Like here, you know, pull out your uh, device. Okay, your quest is, you've accepted the quest. And then you go to the location, you just like scan something, snap a picture, and then send it back to the thing. And then they send you back a, okay, your own quest complete, please return to, you know, like your quest has been updated. And it's like, please return to the tavern to receive, you know, to receive your reward. And then you just go back to the, you know, to the tavern and get your reward. That this is something that honestly could work out well here in the states. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, definitely though, it's interesting. You have to admit there's a lot of interesting things you've. I mean, you have to admit that there are a lot of interesting things in the world, and it's cool when you find out stuff that you didn't think existed, and you find stuff that other people have done. This is definitely cool. It's like an overglorified scavenger hunt in a way, but. In this case, the scavenger hunt is you're basically examining the area or you're going here or there, and it's an RPG style, you know, thing. And like I said, I do think this is something that could actually work uh, here in the States. And this works out apparently well over there in uh, Japan because otherwise there wouldn't have been an article about it. But still, this is cool. Uh, if you live in Japan and you get a chance to check this out, I recommend checking it out. This sounds badass, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah, I I'd be down for something like this. I'd be down to run something like this. It's like, oh, I just got to put up a bunch of quests every single day. Okay, that's fine. Just copy, paste the same request. And then you basically have, like, a thing that they can't take the same quest twice. Or not within, like, a 48-hour period or something. Like, okay, so you did this quest already today. Or you did this quest yesterday. You can't take it again for another 24 hours. And then 24 hours later, then you're able to take the quest again. And... Like I said, I would just, like, add in an ability, and then, to be honest, they might actually even have this, too, of, uh, you know, snap a picture with your smartphone or device or something like that, because you don't know types of RPGs out there. I mean, they could have old-looking taverns and have it be technologically advanced. You'd be surprised what people reveal in bars. It's like that episode of, uh, The Collector, when the devil told the guy, you'd be amazed what people will reveal to a cabbie. You probably would be. There should be an entire show for that. Oh, there is. It's called Cash Cab. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Ben Bailey has to listen to everybody's problems while he's trying to give them money. It's He's going to listen to them trying to answer questions. <laughs> I love that show. Yeah. I love that show. But either way, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a good show. But yeah, so this is definitely something, though, that's pretty cool. And I can see this working, like, in major cities like New York or um, Los Angeles. 
places like that where it's like okay you know like go to this building you know check the area around or you know go here and stand outside for five seconds or do something like that. i can see stuff like this working out here and like i said this is something that you know just really nail the teenage crowd and like the gen zers i guess you want to call them now um basically just go add in the fact that you don't actually serve alcohol like oh no you you're a prudence bar basically you don't serve you don't serve alcohol and you could honestly make a pretty cool thing of this i mean people can come in they can order foods like oh hey i want to take on a couple quests while we're here then they come back and it's like have like a thing like complete this board of quests your next two meals are on us or you eat for a week for free and you know like do that and have or better yet uh even get like some sponsorships from some of the local businesses like hey you know come stand you know come to our building and you know wave at our employees or something you know make our employees feel good you know wave to our employees or help somebody cross the street in front of our building boom just like that there you go you can easily easily make uh a lot of fun out of this but yeah th this is some this is a really cool idea and they're doing it in Japan. I like this. This is unique. This is cool. And again, it's pretty badass. Do I would I err on the side of caution a bit? Yeah, depending upon what the task might be. But I'm pretty sure they probably screen most of those uh, quests before they put them up there. So either way, this is still pretty damn cool. Just just saying, it is pretty cool. All right, and that's gonna pretty much do it then this week for the absolutely completely random podcast. Hopefully my epic battle with the phone company will end my victory, but I doubt that highly. But either way, thank you all for tuning in this week for the podcast. I will be back next week right here on the Web Designer 18 YouTube channel. Same Web Designer time, same Web Designer channel. <laughs> Don't forget to leave your uh, questions for the March uh, Q&A, or I should say for the next Q&A um because i didn't do one in february so keep your stuff so don't be ah, blah, blah, blah. let's try this again feel free to submit your questions for the next q a video i have them stored away yet so they're all squirreled away ready to go yeah i actually have them on a notepad so a virtual notepad so there are they are ready to go uh just feel free to submit your questions uh don't hesitate don't forget to leave the acronym or the yeah, not even an acronym. Don't forget to leave the parenthesis Q ampersand A parenthesis so that I know it's a question for the Q&A, not something you want me to answer right away. And until next time, I'm Andrew Rhodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I am out of here. Bye, everybody.